Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Newscast. Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2011. It is Star Wars Day, so may the 4th be with you. Join us every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern at www.newscast.com for a live interactive discussion about this week's Walt Disney World news. You can watch and talk about the news, be part of the broadcast by joining us in the chat room. If you can't make it live, that's okay. You can watch the video right after on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash WDW Radio or on the WDW Radio blog. You can also catch the audio-only portion in the WDW Radio iTunes feed. Be sure and also follow me over on Twitter. I'm at Lou Mangiello and join the WDW Radio friend page on Facebook. We are facebook.com slash WDW Radio. This week's newscast is brought to you by our good friends over at touringplans.com. They're really the brains and the research team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World, which should be on everybody's bookshelf. Also, lines, which should be on your mobile device. And now they are also covering Star Tours 2 live from Walt Disney World, from park opening to park closing every day. They're there now covering soft openings. They're going to have wait times and lots more. They also are going to have a very cool free wait times application for both the Android and the iPhone device. They may have something called the first tour to Alderaan and lots more. Again, you can follow them over at Star Tours 2 Live. They have lots of great updates about everything Star Tours. So we're certainly going to talk about Star Tours 2 in this week's news, but we have a lot of news to cover this week. It includes dining, special events, and maybe a few more reasons to go to Walt Disney World as if you needed any more. Let's start off with two of my favorite words that are put in a sentence together as just pure heaven, free dining, because it is back in Walt Disney World. For a limited time, you can get a free dining package when you book the new Walt Disney Travel Company Memories Vacation Package. It includes five nights, six days at a select Walt Disney World resort, one theme park per day, uh, Disney Photo Pass book, and free dining for most days from August 28th through September 24th, 2011. Some of the details is if you book a value resort, Pop Century, one of the all-star resorts, that includes the quick service dining plan, which is two quick service meals and two snacks per person per night of your stay, and one resort refillable mug per person, refillable only at your resort. If you do moderate, deluxe, or deluxe villa resort on property you get the disney dining plan the full dining plan which includes one table service meal one quick service meal per day one snack per person per day uh if you book you need to book through august 27th 2011 you can book directly with disney As, of course i recommend using an authorized disney vacation planner my official and recommended is, of course, Mouse Fan Travel. You can visit them over at mousefantravel.com. For those of you who are in the chat room, very excited. As soon as I said free dining, my questions to you and whoever's watching maybe on the blog or on YouTube, does free dining, does this kind of promotion entice you to maybe book a new trip? Say if you're within flying or driving distance, does, if you can get a good airfare, if you can drive down, is free dining enough to make you come down during this time of year? Uh, have you ever taken a f advantage of free dining before? If so, what do you think about it? Um, dare I say, is it too much food if you're on the full dining package? What do you think about the dining plan? And uh, a lot of people are saying, yes, they would definitely do it if they can work out. Uh, obviously, a lot of people, depending on where you are in the country, kids may not be back in school as yet uh, in the end of August. So it may be a good opportunity to sneak in one more trip again, not necessarily the busiest times of year. Of course, check touringplans.com for the crowd calendar. Uh, but let's talk about some other things going on in Walt Disney World not too far thereafter, because I mentioned some special events and some additional reasons to visit Walt Disney World. Two of them could be Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party and or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. Tickets are now on sale for both of those events. Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party takes place at 7 p.m. to midnight on select dates starting September 13th, ending on November 1st. I'll put a link on the WW Radio blog with exact dates. The party runs from 7 to midnight and includes some very cool stuff like the Boo to You Halloween Parade, Happy Hallowishes Fireworks twice a night, 
Uh, happy Hollow Wishes. Um, there's also the parade at 8.15 and 10.30. You can also trick or treat and get free candy around the Magic Kingdom. It does not get any better than that. You've got to make sure you see the Headless Horseman ride down Main Street and the Haunted Mansion Grave Diggers worth the price of admission. Speaking of prices, uh, you, they kind of vary wildly because you can purchase in advance. There are pass holder and DVC member discounts on certain dates. Uh, you can also purchase on the day of the event. They do kind of range from about $57 for advanced purchases in September to looks like maybe about $67 if still available if you purchase on the day of the event. Uh, if you try and purchase for the 28th or the 31st, that cost day of event, if they are available, and those dates sell out very, very quickly, $72 for adults, $67 for kids. You can buy tickets by calling 407-934-7639 or going to DisneyWorld.com. Again, if you are interested in going, many of those dates, especially on weekends, do sell out in advance, especially Halloween night, which is going to sell out very, very quickly. If Halloween's not your thing, maybe it doesn't fit into your vacation plans, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. There is no better place really in the world to spend the holidays than in Walt Disney World. Dates for there start November 8th and on, looks like December 8th, uh, let's sorry, December 18th, um, 2011. So if you visit Walt Disney World that first week in November, you can catch Not So Scary Halloween and Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. That has all the makings for a great Walt Disney World trip. Uh, again, party runs from 7 to midnight. It is a hard ticketed event. It includes a lot of great entertainment, including the Castle Dream Lights, which really you can see anytime. But of course, special stuff goes on during the party as well. Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade. Love the music there. Get to see Santa at the end. Special Holiday Wishes Fireworks. Celebrate the Season Castle Stage Show, which I love. It snows on Main Street. Um, and of course, there's free hot cocoa and cookies. So you get free food and Santa. Great music, a great time. Again, prices for this range from about $56 for pass holder and DVC for the discount days uh, at $60.66 for advanced purchase, up to $67 for day of event tickets. Again, call 407-WDisney or go to DisneyWorld.com to purchase tickets. Uh, I see a lot of people who are talking in the chat room. Uh, Chuck, the Disney daddy, says the dream lights are incredible. Uh, Where's Pluto loves the hot cocoa, so does E. Green. Uh, they're talking about the dream light and the snow on Main Street. It, and now that's what I want to ask you. Do you have a preference maybe between one of the parties over the other, Halloween or Christmas? Again, very, very different types of experiences. But if you could choose one, if you've done it in the past or if you're thinking about coming this year, what would you choose? Not so scary Halloween party or Mickey's very merry Christmas party. If you've been, if you have seen it in the past, is this something that you are sure to see every year that you make it a point to come down at least one day or up or over depending on where you live to see and go to one of the halloween or christmas parties again it is a hard ticket event so if you have a family of four five six uh it can get pretty pricey but for a lot of people they definitely think it is worth the, the cost i want to ask you the same question if you have gone before do you find a good value for the dollar uh, do you feel like you are getting uh, your money's worth when you do. I have gone every year for as far back as I can remember, and I never feel as though I have never gotten the value for what I have put into it. Uh, some people are saying that they like the Halloween parade better. They like the Christmas lights and the Christmas shows a little bit better. Uh, the Christmas decorations and atmosphere, Trumpeteer, I agree with you. There is something very special about the popcorn lights and the uh, projections and the snow and the music on Main Street USA, there is something, it's a completely different experience than if you come at any time of year. It's that the park uh, has a different feel to it. I think Halloween does as well with all the fall decorations, but there is something about the atmosphere. There's something about just wandering the Magic Kingdom, especially during Christmas time, that I like. Um, although, the, uh, the parade for Halloween is arguably one of my favorite parades ever in Walt Disney World. Uh, if you like or if you've seen either one of those, and again, I want you to comment either here on YouTube, on the blog, or even here in the chat room, I'll keep watching. What's your favorite part? What is it about these parties that draws you to the event? Is it the atmosphere, the decor, the sugar cookies, the headless horsemen, the free trick-or-treating? What is it? What is it about it that makes you want to go? Some people are saying hollow wishes, trick-or-treating, the lights, 
Hollow wishes, hollow wishes, free candy. <laughs> so it looks like candy and uh, and fireworks uh, really seem to bring out the kid in all of us. So yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Please come by, come post on the WDW Radio blog, comment on what do you think of the parties, which is your favorite, what draws you, and do you find that you get a good value for it? You know, maybe do you make a special trip up just to see one of the parties. Again, a lot of news. I want to move on a little bit because registration is open for another special event coming to Walt Disney World. It's the Presenting Pixar, uh, celebrating Pixar's 25th anniversary. That's going to be held next week, May 13th through the 15th, during Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival, which is reason to come to Disney anyway. There are special guests, which are going to give you a real inside look at the Pixar Animation Studios. There's going to be sessions that run on the 14th and the 15th, including Jay Ward is going to have Cars 101, Inspiration for all the car actors you know and love. Their pun, not mine. Uh, Jonas Rivera is going to be there at 2 o'clock. Pixar celebrating 25 years of animation. Michael Giacchino, behind the music. A score is born. Would love to see him. Need to talk to him about Lost. Uh, and finally, there's also going to be a 6 o'clock presentation with all three. There's also going to be themed topiaries. Check out Mater and Lightning McQueen at the entrance to Epcot. Uh, entrance to World Showcase right now. Spectacular. Character meet and greets, kids activities, lots more. You can visit PixarWeekend.com to register and for more information. Again, same question for you. If you're an animation fan, a flower and garden fan, a cars fan, is this something that you would make a special trip out to go and see? Now, Disney's also hosting something else in conjunction with that, a great tie-in to the uh, Cars 2 film, which is coming out June 24th. Downtown Disney is hosting the Car Masters Weekend, also May 14th through the 15th, where you can get to hang out with Lightning Queen, Mater, and Finn McMissile. There's also going to be a video, uh, video kiosk, e-photo opportunities and games. You'll be able to see the Cars movie at the newly redesigned, by the way, AMC Pleasure Island 24 Theater Complex all weekend long. And you can also check out a classic car display and build your own car over at Ride Makers, which has new Cars 2 models. So if you're a Cars fan or a Cars the movie fan, lots of cool car stuff going on next weekend, May 14th to the 15th. Again, Car Masters Weekend in Downtown Disney, and you can visit PixarWeekend.com. Speaking of additional special events, and this one uh, is close to home for me because, again, it involves food. Because uh, if you are a Tables in Wonderland uh, member, and if you are an annual pass holder, you absolutely should be, there are some additional special dining events. They've been doing these over the last couple of years. Very, very popular, very successful. During the month of May, they have a number of them exclusively for Tables in Wonderland uh, pass holders. The first one is Sunday, May 8th, so get on it quickly. It's the Flower Power Happy Hour, say that three times fast, at the American Adventure Parlor at Epcot. Happy Hour, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to have cocktails from 6 to 7 at the American Adventure Parlor with hors d'oeuvres, beer, wine, and specialty beverages. 7.15, you go to the America Gardens Theater for reserved seating for the 7.45 Davy Jones not the scary pirate, but the lead guy for the monkeys who still rocks it and is popular with the ladies to this day. That is $35 per person plus tax. Gratuity is included. That event and all these events are limited. That one is limited to 60 guests, may be sold out already. Definitely check the pass holder site for more information. On Saturday, May 28th, if Illuminations is your thing, there is an Illuminations dessert party at The Wave. It's gonna, I'm sorry, go back, I misread. Saturday, May 28th, is the Illuminations Dessert Party at the Isle de France over in Epcot. You're going to get front row seats for Illuminations, platters of delectable desserts and coffee. Again, speaking my language. Uh, that's going to start at 8 o'clock. It's going to run through Illuminations until about 9.30. That is $50 per person plus tax. That event is limited to just 100 guests. On Thursday, May 19th, over at the Wave at Disney's Contemporary Resort, it's the Wave of American Flavors Discovery Dinner. Words, music to my ears. It's gonna be a dinner featuring the produce of Long and Scott Farms. There's gonna be a reception at 6.30 p.m., dinner at seven, and it is a wave. It's a semi-formal event, so they ask for casual evening attire, no shorts and tank tops and flip-flops. The price for this is $92 per person. That includes tax and gratuity. This event is very limited, 
only 44 guests, so a little bit more of an exclusive type event over at The Wave. For more information, for reservations, I know I went through those pretty quickly. You can visit, write this down, kids, www.tables.in.wonderland at disney.com. Or, of course, you can go to the Passholder website for more information. Again, uh, seating is going to be on a first-come, first-served reservation basis. These are all very limited events. Uh, again, these have been very popular in the past. They do sell out. If anybody has had a chance to experience one of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments on it. What did you think about the experience? What did you think about the value? Is it something that interests you? And if so, which is one of those that you may be most interested in going to see? For me, that wave of American flavors uh, is one of the ones that really sounds intriguing because of the type of event it is. It's less about the other things going on, like the concerts and illuminations, as it is really, as you can tell, more about the food for me. Uh, so finally, the last piece of news I want to touch. Again, today is May 4th, 2011. It is Star Wars Day, in air quotes. So of course, may the 4th be with you. I love the fact that we can now create a holiday based solely around Star Wars puns. The geek in me is coming out. And if you are a Star Wars geek, and a Disney geek, Star Wars Weekends is coming up just in a couple of weeks. Again, I talked to you about StarTours2Live.com. They have all kinds of updates about the Star Tours attraction. But don't forget, there is a lot more going on uh, for Star Wars Weekends this year. They run every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from May 20th through June 12th. And the celebrity guests have been announced for this year's Star Wars Weekends. Uh, once again, hosts include James Arnold Taylor, who's the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi in Star Tours. And there she is, Ashley Eckstein, the voice of Ahsoka Tano in Star Wars The Clone Wars. Ashley was actually a guest on the show last year. She's going to host Clone Wars Behind the Force, a closer look inside the animated TV series. James is going to have another new event first. He's going to star in a one-man show uh, that showcases some of the voices he's performed in The Clone Wars. And then each weekend, there are a different set of Star Wars celebrities from the films, from the extended universe. The first weekend, May 20th through 22nd, Anthony Daniels. You know him as the lovable and not-so-huggable C-3PO. He'll be there. And the Clone Wars special guest, supervising director Dave Filoni. Anthony Daniels coming back May 27th through 29th, as well as Bruce Spence, who is Tion Medon. And the Clone Wars voice talent guest, guest is going to be D. Bradley Baker. He is Captain Rex. June 3rd through the 5th, a lot of people are going to be here to see Ray Park, who, as you know, is Darth Maul. Jeremy Bullock is Boba Fett. And the Clone Wars voice talent is Matt Lanter. He is Anakin Skywalker. June 12th, Ray Park is back, so you get a chance to see him there. Peter Mayhew, Chewbacca, is there. And Tom Kane, who's the voice of Yoda, big lineup the final weekend. In addition, obviously, Star Tours 2 launches on May 20th. There's going to be parades, trivia challenges, Jedi Training Academy, get there early kids, limited edition merchandise, memorabilia, other presentations, uh, star conversations, autograph sessions, so much that goes on you can experience there for Star Wars weekend. Don't even have to ride a single attraction, although I have a feeling there may be a line or 10 for Star Tours 2. So my question to you guys as we're running a little bit long is do you go to Star Wars weekends? Have you been in the past? Are you going to maybe make a trip out this year? Time it in with the opening of Star Tours 2. And if so, if you only get one chance to go, do you base your weekend on the specific celebrities or do you base it on your schedule? Do you say, hey, I'm a Peter Mayhew guy. I've got to go see Ray Park. I want to go one of the last two weekends or does it just not matter to you? Mary Albright says Star Wars Weekends is a yearly thing. Um, Adam says he's never been, probably wouldn't go because of the craziness of the crowds. Adam, don't be surprised because the, the crowds aren't as crazy as it might seem. Yes, they line up early, but if you're not an autograph hound and if you get there early enough for some of the events, there's a chance to do everything. And it really doesn't affect the rest of the crowds, the Star Wars people stay in that Star Wars universe. George Lucas, please make it Star Wars land. While other guests who are there not to enjoy Star Wars, it really doesn't flow over into Toy Story Mania and Hollywood and Sunset Boulevards. Um, Lynn says it's tough. She can't go. Kids are in school. Um, 
And one song, 316, says the crowd calendar. Touring plan says the first Saturday is actually really low this year, by the way. Um, Lady Aurora also makes a great point. It actually empties out pretty fast in the afternoon. But it's a great opportunity just to wander around and be a Star Wars geek, as, uh, as many of us are. Uh, the real question that I have for you, though, is do you bring your own lightsaber or do you build one while you're, while you're there? They, of course, have the build your own lightsaber over at Tatooine Traders, which has just reopened. I have a feeling the line for that is going to be very uh, long as well. The other question I have for you is if you're going to be there on May 21st, that Saturday, the opening weekend of Star, of Star Tours 2, are you going to be able to come by? The WDW Radio Meet of the Month. Again, that's Saturday, May 21st. For more details, visit DisneyMeets.com. You can also visit WDW Radio and find out more information there. Uh, I would love to hear more about your thoughts about all the news we covered. A lot about um, Star Wars weekends. You know, do you like to go? Do you go with your family? Do you go solo? What do you go for? What about that event attracts you to Star Wars weekends? For a lot of people, it's going to be Star Tours too. For others, it's just sort of like we, you know, that the Disney community, there's a Star Wars community that just likes to be there and experience sort of that three-dimensional Star Wars universe going on. Uh, seeing some of the other guests dressed up is as entertaining as getting online and seeing some of the presentations and things that go on out and about. You've got to make sure you stay till the very end, of course, for the hyperspace hoopla. That is one of my favorite parts of Star Wars weekends. But I want to know what yours is. I want to know what your favorite parts of the weekend are. What draws you to Star Wars weekend at the studios, if anything? Or do you try and stay away? Is Star Wars just not your thing? Blasphemy. Um, and you don't go to the studios. Uh, and if you do, if you are getting ready to go, if you are looking to go for the opening of Star Tours 2, again, visit StarTours2Live.com. Download the free uh, app for the iPhone and the Android from our friends over at uh, Touring Plans. And again, please keep your comments coming on the WW Radio blog and over on YouTube. Uh, that is going to do it for this week. Please make sure you join us every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern at www.newscast.com. <clears throat> Be sure to also come and visit the website over at www.radio.com. Download the podcast each week. Subscribe in iTunes. Come and also download the free WW Radio iPhone app. Lots more going on on the website as well. Also, check out LouMangelo.com. You can find out more about some of the other things I'm doing, including private tours of Walt Disney World. Lots of other stuff there. And uh, stay tuned. There is lots more coming as well, I promise you. So that is going to do it for this week's show. Thanks so much to everybody in the chat room. Thanks of all to all of you who are watching live or watching uh, the video on YouTube. And, of course, anybody listening in the iTunes feed. I am Lou Mangiello from WW Radio. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow.